Lydia Asefa Dawson. And do I miss anybody on council side? All right. Okay. And uh, we have uh, support staff are here. So um, our first things is public comments. Do we have any public comments? We do. It looks like we do have Debbie here and I will allow her to talk. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Debbie, are you there? I am. Perfect. Debbie, um, welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> actually, I think I had sent my comments to Susan, but um, just wanted to remind the council or the, uh, the meeting today um, when it when we're talking about utilities, um, whether it's a rebate program or whether it's increase in fees or taxes or any of those type of things to just please keep in mind the seniors, um, especially those seniors on a fixed income. Um, that's part of the senior commission group. We are starting to work on that. We're looking at the rebate program itself for the city of federal way. We're also, um, hopefully making contact with the utility companies to try to get some input from them. Um, we just started working on this uh, last week. Uh, so just wanted to throw that out there that as you guys go forward um, and you're talking about uh, the rebate program, which, you know, we think it needs to be adjusted and, and we're going to hopefully, you know, submit our, our, our uh, ideas and what we come up with to the council. Um, but that's probably not going to be until mid-March or a little bit later before we get to that point. But as you guys are talking today, I just wanted to throw out, just, just please keep in mind, you know, the equity of the seniors not having a lot of money. If you're on a fixed income, everything counts. So I just wanted to throw that out to you guys. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you. Okay, Jennifer, do you have any anyone else? That was it for public comments. Great. Okay. Thank you. So we are going to uh, moving on to uh, committee business. And the first item is approval of summary minutes for January 26, 2021. Uh, before we do that, I want to publicly uh, thank uh, committee members, Coach Ma, for facilitating the meeting. Uh, last month while I was gone. So thank you, Linda. Okay. So I trust that uh, committee members already have a chance to read um, the summary report, I mean, summary minutes. Yeah, thank you, Han. Uh, move approval of the January 26, 2021 minutes. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. The minute, the minute, the, <laughs> I can't even say today. The summary minutes for January 26, 2021 is passed with three zero. The next item on my uh, screen is historical. Society of Federal Way Funding. Are they? Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the Historical Society uh, contract, we started uh, a written agreement with them several years ago. And what this is, is just pretty much an extension of what we've done before so it's pretty much the same thing uh monthly or quarterly they submit a report of what they are doing what they've done and uh, we pay them quarterly and that's pretty much uh, it's pretty much a uh, straightforward now if uh, the uh, committee has any question i'll be glad to, uh, to answer that Does anybody have, oh, um, we have uh, community members, Coach Ma, go ahead, please. Thank you very much. Uh, a day, uh, I 
have you been sending those reports to the council? Uh, no. If uh, that is the, the pleasure of the council, yes, we'll be glad I, to I, I would. I would like to see that, you know, okay. what, what reports are being made. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, do you, since they usually send it in paper, so what we'll probably do, especially at this age of uh, social distancing, if it's okay, we'll probably just scan it in and forward it to you. Would that be okay? You're great. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. Um, Council President Honda. Thank you. I just uh, want to say I'm glad that the city supported the Historical Society. I think they're doing a good job of saving the history in federal way. You know, a lot of people don't think that we have history like other cities do, but we've been a community for probably over 100 years. My grandfather logged down at um, Redondo in the early 1900s. So. We have a great history here, and I appreciate all the work that they do. Yeah. Um, Adair, I do have a question. Um, I noticed that the amount of money is uh, is been the same for the last, uh, I don't know for how long, many, many years. Um, I wonder why they didn't ask for, you know, a little bit of increase, uh, at least, you know, tie with the inflation, for example. You know why? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you, you, the council went through the budget a few months ago, and you saw what you did. Uh, I, I think uh, they probably understand the financial co uh, constraint of the city. But, you know, uh, if uh, the council want me to ask them to ask for increase, I can ask them. But <laughs> I'm sure they'll be <laughs> glad to have it. But I think uh, the city has some... Uh, Major, which I think when we bring the budget amendment to you, you know, I think it will be so evident. Some of the positions that the council approved, you know, you approved them for just one year. So you need to find money to fund them for the next year, especially when we're dealing with the biennium budget. And uh, you have uh, several bargaining groups that will be coming. So, but again, just an FYI. So. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm just curious. Uh, yeah. They did not, and I did not offer, so. Okay, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> okay, is there any, any other questions or discussion on this subject? If not, may I have a motion, please? Linda, you uh, muted. <laughs> Do I owe you money for a Diet Coke? <laughs> I don't drink oh, Diet Coke. Oh, that's you can, the mayor. Uh, I, I, <laughs> okay. I can start a, a funding for, you know, Hawaii or something, you know. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> My little quarter isn't going to get you too far, buddy. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I move to forward the proposed memorandum of understanding to the March 2nd, 2021 consent agenda for approval. I second that. Okay, we have a motion. We have a um, second. Is there any uh, other discussion or questions? If not, please say aye if you are in favor of this. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, this matter passed 3-0, and now we are moving to item C, the um, okay. AP vouchers January mm -hmm. 16 of 2021 through February 15, 2021, and payroll voucher from January 1st of 2021 until January 31st of 2021. A day? Yeah. yeah, I will have uh, our accounting manager, uh, Mr. Donnelly, present both uh, the voucher and monthly reports since I wasn't here, you know, so, okay, Chase? Yeah, good evening, uh, Council Chair Tran, uh, Council President Honda, and Council members. And um, before you are the vouchers that uh, Council Chair Tran just uh, notated, 
Um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. I know Ade sent an email earlier this week on some of the questions that came through, but we'd be happy to answer any others that you may have. Does anybody have any additional questions? I know that uh, Council um, President Honda did send uh, an email with uh, several questions to Ade um, earlier. And I hope I copy everyone on that uh, response on, on the response to that email. And I mean, I really appreciate uh, Council President uh, Honda going through these, and you know, I think uh, it makes it easier to. Uh, uh, but I know it's a lot of work on, you know, for you guys going through these and trying to figure out what all of those uh, my numbers mean. So thank you, Council President Honda. Uh, Ade, I do have a questions in regard to the uh, wireless um, bills. I noticed that uh, we have uh, we pay T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Is there a reason why we have three different wireless providers and not just you know consolidated into just one? Into one. Uh, I, I th <clears throat> excuse me. I think the coverage for each one of them are different. Uh, more so especially for our law enforcement, I think, uh, depending on where they are, you know, I think, uh, and also the service and the fee that some of them charge, you have some of us that are uh, not heavy user of the plan. Then you have, for example, some of our officers that they use it for their patrol car, they also use uh, for their computer, and they also use their cell phone where they are every user of data plan and i think the coverage that they need is probably way different from the occasional cell phone user that are just mainly our, our office workers i think that's part of the reason why we have you know different carrier to fulfill those needs i see thank you Committee members, uh, the the answer correct. Uh, thank you. So the one question I had is on page thirty for the vouchers. It's um, the item is called Pierce County Security, and the total was for six thousand eight hundred and four dollars and fifty two cents. It's under miscellaneous uh, uh, services and charges. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get the question to you, but I, if you had it on hand, I was wondering if you knew what that was for. And you said page 30? Yes, page 30. Okay. It's page um, 19 of 49 in the top right-hand corner. Okay. Thank 30 you. of the packet. It's municipal court security. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for that questions. Okay, does anybody have any other questions? If not, may I have a motion, please? Uh, Leander, would you like to make the motion? Sure. Uh, I move to approve the vouchers from January 16, 2021 to February 15, 2021. I move to forward. I, yes, I apologize. Thank you. I move to forward um, the AP vouchers of January 16, 2021 to February 15, 2021. To the, to the March 2nd uh, the March consent agenda? Consent agenda, yes. Okay. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, the matter passed 3-0. And now we are moving to item D, monthly financial report, final December 2020. Are they? Mr. Donnelly? Yeah. 
Good evening, Chair Tran, Council Members, and Council President Honda. Um, before you is the final December 2020 report, which includes the 13th month that we said that we would include when we brought back the December report. That has to do with activities that occur within January and February of the following year that are attributable to December. And so we book them back to December in order to give you a final December report. I am going to share my screen for the financial report so that you can see a few of the items that I'm highlighting. So let me get to that. Can you see the screen that I just pulled up? Yes, I can. Okay, um, so I'm gonna start on page 62. Um, the sales tax is about 1.67 million or 11.6% above the 2020 budget and 0.2 million or 1.4% above 2019 collections. And so sales tax has done um, better than uh, what we were expecting when we reduced the budget during the amendment. Um, that has to do primarily um, with one-time construction sales tax um, due to sound transit and other construction activities within the city. Um, the community development permits and fees is 0.2 million or 10.7% below the 2020 budget and 2.6 million or 56.8 below 29 collections. We also reduced that budget um, during the budget amendment that was done in uh, July, um, and that is performing a little lower. Um, that has to do with just less large permits that are coming through for community development permits and fees and construction stopping due to COVID-19. Um, a couple of the larger projects back in 2019 um, included DeVita and Federway Premier Storage. Those brought in quite a few fees last year, but also some construction has stopped due to um, COVID-19. Um, business license fees though are looking good um, and are 22,000 or 3.5% above the 2020 budget and 237,000 or 58.3% above 2019 collections. When we went to the state system, that's really helped um, with tracking of businesses within the city because they have some different reports that um, capture the businesses that may have had a Federway address, but never had a Federway business license. And so we were able to send out letters to those businesses and capture the revenue that we hadn't captured in prior years. Um, also, if you look, so I, I'm communicating of these few points, but if you look down on to page 64, this is where some of those revenues are like the sales tax annual budget versus annual actual, the community development permits and fees that I hit on here, um, and the business license fees that are right here in the report. So total revenues um, also due to parks and general recreation fees being under due to facilities being closed and not being able to have the various events that the parks department has been able to have. The total revenues in the general and street fund were under the annual budget by 1.5 million, but the total spending in the general and street fund was under by 4.4 million. A big portion of that is the jail. Um, and one of the reasons why that is, is because we, um, our budget for our average day daily population in the jail is 70, but actual ADP for each of the months has come quite a bit lower. So um, for example, for November, the ADP was 24.3, for December, it was 20.9. And so that's less than half of the um, ADP amount um, that was budgeted for the jail. Now back up to this page. We also report on other funds besides the general and street fund. We have multiple funds. Utility tax revenues received annually as reported on the financial report totals 14.7 million and is 3.57 million or 32.2% of the 2019 actuals and 0.37 million or 2.6% above the 2020 budget. So we were close to the 2020 budget, but it did come a bit above. Um, 
of that 3.57 million, 2.93 million of that is related directly to the new water and sewer utility tax um, related to the different agencies paying that tax on water and sewer utilities. The Federway Community Center um, revenues of 495 495,000 is below the 2020 budget by 679,000 or 57.8% and below 2019 actual by 1.3 million. Um, expenditures are also below budget by 403,000 and below 2019 actual by 1.1 million. And that just has to do with the facility being closed. You'll see very similar um, numbers for the Duma Space Center, um, which is further down in the report. Um, real estate excise tax um, has done reasonably well, and that's partly due to an amount that we received in December from the sale of Club Palisades Apartments and the amount of $174 million. Um, that accounted for uh, $860,000 of the tax received for December of $1.22 million. And so that kept the, the real estate excise tax above the 2020 um, projected numbers. Um, some of the other departments being underspent um, within the general and street fund, so our normal uh, departments like mayor's office, community development, human services, this have to do with um, COVID-19 closure, um, not having as many uh, salaries, overtime, temporary help. Um, a lot of those numbers are under um, spent um, due to uh, COVID-19 and just the city being closed for all those months um, and construction stoppage and those those various items. Um, if you scroll through the report, I did touch on sales tax already. This is a little more detailed table that kind of gives you a by month comparison. Um, also gives you a comparison by the different categories of sales tax, so retail, construction. I had noted that construction was up. As you can see, um, it's above 2019 by 508,000. Um, this does it by location. Um, this was utility tax, I had touched on that item and you can see that 3.57 million over 2019 has to do with the water and sewer utility tax. And then this does a comparison year over year, 2019 to 2020 by each of the major utility tax types. The proposition one utility tax, this is a table where we track all the proposition one funding that comes in for the revenue. And then each of the individual spending and in that um, fund is within the required reserve um, fund balance policy that council set of 1 million. Um, I touched on the real estate excise tax, we're, although we're under 2019 actuals uh, compared to budget, it's above by 827,000 and that has to do with this large amount um, that was received in December from that large sale. Um, this was the community development permits fees that I touched on earlier as well. Um, and it's coming under 2019 as well as under the 2020 budget. And then there's some numbers here that talk about what we've received in prior years. And so you, as you can see, um, construction has slowed down and permits and fees have slowed down as well. Um, this is comparison of overtime, police overtime. Um, change from 2019, it's under by 95,000, but about 100,000 over, uh, 137,000 over 2020 budget. Um, and then the jail services I had already touched on as well. And you, as you can see, the annual budget is 3.98 with spending of 2.56. And that was a majority of the savings within the general and street fund summary up above. Can I ask a quick question about the police overtime? Yes. So is there any indication that the reduction in overtime is because they're uh, like the courts were closed for a little bit or um, do you know why the overtime was less? I don't have that specific information as far as the court, but one of the items that um, decreased was shift call-in overtime. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
they had to do less shift column than just over the prior year. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, traffic safety red light photo. This is where we track the revenue that comes in for that versus the spending. As you can see, the revenue has um, greatly decreased and that has to do with um, school closures as well as um, less people driving, having to go to um, into the office every day. And so um, there's less, looks like there's less red lights being run, etc. Um, this is where we track the court revenue. Um, the court revenue is lower than um, 2019 by 208,000 and lower than budget by 200,000 as well. And then I already talked a little bit about the Federal Community Center, the spending, the revenue is down as well as the spending, um, but we're within the required ending fund balance reserve policy uh, within the fund. And then the Dumas Bay Center, I also had commented on that. We did reduce the budget during the budget adjustment and the revenue is under by 231,000 compared to the budget and the spending is also below. As you can see, compared to 2019 actuals, it's quite a bit lower. And that has to do with the facility being closed during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this is the table where we track the self-insured um, health insurance fund. Um, it's within the required reserves fund balance policy. Uh, there's 3.19 million within the fund. Um, and that is uh, a required uh, fund balance um, per uh, the consultant. This is the table where we track the Performing Arts and Event Center. Um, and we ended the year with zero ending fund balance. Um, it's where we track the revenue and the spending. Again, the facility was primarily closed and um, we brought in minimal revenue and had uh, minimal spending. Um, this is the table where we've tracked all the COVID um, funding as far as how much we received in the grant funding compared to what we spent um, for the state grant, um, the community development block grant, and then grant funding that we received from King County for a total of $4,565,518. And then the last page of the monthly financial report includes every individual fund, the ending fund balance for each of those individual funds, and then it compares it to the 2021 budgeted beginning fund balance as was set by um, the ordinance that was passed for the um, 2021 budget. And so it compares each of the ending fund balances compared to what we budgeted for the beginning. Um, like I said, there will be a budget amendment coming up and there are a number of items that we'll need to draw um, some of these fund balances um, down for ex other expenditures that are coming up. Um, and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Jace, thank you for that report. Committee members, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, I do. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Chair Tran. Um, Mr. Donnelly, on page 68, uh, to the water sewer utility tax, uh, I know that the, um, does that reflect the 2020 amount of 2930000 does that reflect just one year or does that reflect the amount that had been put aside in a, um, a fund waiting the court? It, re it reflects both. So the amount that we received um, with the back pay as well as what we've received for this year. So I know we had talked about $1 million per year in the very beginning. What, what is it that we are expecting to receive from that particular tax? On a yearly uh, basis. Yeah, I can go out and look really quickly. Um, I'm just. We... I, 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 the, you... the only reason the only reason I'm asking is um, I know that we're talking about the water sewer. That's a new utility tax that would probably be included in the utility tax rebate program. I am assuming. Uh, yes, it, yes, it will be. 
uh, in the new proposal that we'll be bringing to you. Uh, okay. The one million, uh, just to make sure it's uh, clear in everybody's mind, the one million that we're estimating <laughs> is the net, because currently we have three, bef excuse me, before we levied the utility tax, we had an agreement for them to pay uh, a franchise fee of 3.6. So the 1 million that we calculate is the excess over that 3.6 up to the 7.75%. So mm -hmm. actually, annually, that is the net increase, but the total utility that we will be collecting from water and so will probably will be about two million. Okay, so that's that's sizable. So I'm I'm just wanting to make sure that that amount that's on the utility tax the uh, water sewer bill is yes. also included in the utility tax rebate program because you know I think uh, the people are that want to apply for that have to save their bills. Yep. Uh, you know, for one year. Uh, yes, actually, based on our conversation last month, part of uh, when we get to that point of discussing utility tax, some of the citizens, uh, uh, I think, and also comparing what we do to other cities, I think if the council and the mayor agree, we probably would recommend to the council not to ask for all the monthly invoices because some of our senior citizens are having a hard time you know compiling yeah. 12 months of invoices i think part of what we'll probably yeah. bring to the council bring to this committee which again i'll speak to that uh, at later on is if we know they are in this building for the whole year what we want mm -hmm. just give us the last bill from any of this utility to attest that you pay for it but if that individual is there for mm -hmm. the whole year, there's no need for us to compile 12 months of mm -hmm. water and bill, 12 months mm -hmm. of uh, cellular phone, 12 months of mm -hmm. electricity, and I right. think it's becoming too much. Also, okay. part of what we'll bring forth is come up with a flat amount. You know, I think that will lessen the workload on their part, on our staff also. And I think if they meet the requirement, Whatever amount, say for example, it's a flat uh, fifty dollar for what and so twenty five for this, a total of hundred dollars. If that senior citizen qualify for it, we write them a flat check of hundred dollars to make thank it as you. simple as possible for them. Thank, thank you very much, Ade. And then, Ade, are we also? I know that the commission is reviewing this, but how how are we getting this information? Do we put an ad, uh, some kind of a something in the paper or some way to reach out to people so that they understand they can apply for this? Uh, we usually post it on, at Walmart, post at the community center at their door, post it, but we do not currently advertise it in the paper. So it actually was a council president that suggested we post it on Walmart and all of this before. So, but okay. if during this process, if the council has other areas or as uh, Debbie spoke before, if we're able to come up with some other areas to reach, you know, our citizens, I think we'll be glad to, to, to do that. Well, that, that'd be great. I Like, for example, when the mayor does his State of the City address, it might be, mm -hmm. you know, to include that so that people understand. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, when we when the mayor does a, a editorial in the paper or uh, maybe included in there, I mean, just so we get the word out, because there okay. are a lot of isolated seniors that don't belong to a community center mm -hmm. um, that, you know, that we could reach. And even if they don't read it, their family members or their neighbors could read it and let them know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I thank, think thank you, Day. Part of what we may also do, especially if somebody applied for it this year, you know, we may send them a reminder the following year, you know, unless their okay. financial situation has changed, most likely we've seen the same group of people year after year. So I think that may be another outreach that, uh, <clears throat> you know, whatever changes we make that we will try to do next year. Yeah, yeah. Because the highest ones actually that I see on your 2020 are the highest 
uh, are the electric bills. Um, your gas is high, but uh, cable is high. So water and sewer is right up there with the highest um, bills. So, you know, it'd be yes. good for them to realize that water and sewer is now also included in that utility yes. tax rebate program. Thank you very much today. And I have one more question for the uh, for Chair Tran or for uh, or maybe you. Uh, my question, my second question is, I believe Mr. Donnelly said that our a average ADP, average daily population in the jail was half of what was budgeted. Do you know if that's because we're not arresting people because of the county, you know, catch and release kind of a program that they've got? Or um, is it because uh, our, it's, our crime is down? I'm just wondering. Oh, definitely. It's not because we're... Uh, it's not because we're letting people go. It's not because we're not arresting people. I think because of COVID, a lot of people are staying indoor. I think uh, there's a less crime, but I think our police officers, if somebody still deserves to be arrested, they're still arresting them. But I think uh, the COVID is having impact, unfortunately, uh, well, even on crimes too, because everybody's on the lockdown. I think that is part of uh, what it is that is affecting that. And also, when we were with uh, uh, with uh, uh, SCORE, whether we use it or not, we were paying a certain amount. Like what we have now, the ADP that we have, even as our ADP is slow, if we were with SCORE, all of that money would be gone regardless of our ADP. So that is where the savings is. And to make sure we put the uh, the council's mind and the citizens, part of the mayor's desire is to make sure that we will not let people go because we don't have money. And that is part of why we are budgeting the full amount to make sure if people commit crime, we have money to lock them up. The last thing we want to do, and actually I think uh, it was a you, Council Member Coachman, that brought up to say, well, we need to, to build it up to make sure, sure the crime rate goes up. We have the money. And I think that is part of why we budgeted that, you know, appropriately in 2021 to make sure if the crime rate goes up, people will be locked up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ade. <clears throat> thank you, Chair Tran. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ade, uh, for that. Um, Ryan, do you have, in addition to what uh, Ade just said, do you have any um, insight that you uh, could share with us? I uh, just, I mean, the chief has repeatedly stated that, um, especially for the first six or seven months of COVID nineteen, uh, crime was way down. We've seen an increase in domestic violence crimes, but besides that, every other type of crime has been way, way down. So. That is probably why there's been a reduction in bookings. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ade. Uh, I do see, uh, let's see, um, Council President Honda. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, my question is on business licenses. So when we find out that there's a business in Federal Way who has not had an active business license, in federal way, um, yet they have a state license. Is there a penalty assessed to them uh, for not carrying a business license in the city? Uh, actually, we're doing way better now than we've done in the past because we went onto the state system. And I, I think last year we probably did probably about three batches of mail that we went after people that have license with the state. But now with uh, since we are using the same system, we're able to query, even without anybody reporting them, we're able to query people that have, that have uh, uh, the address in the city of Federal Way and have the state license without the city. And that is part of why our revenue stream has gone up because we're able to actually increase the number of businesses in our system. Uh, the current policy now uh, does not uh, specifically penalize somebody like, oh, 
if you are caught not having business, you will be charged, you know, this much. No. Remember, for most of the businesses, the amount is about $80. So it's only the big wigs that have 100 employees, 200 employees that are paying. Majority of our businesses are small business owners where they are paying 85 bucks, you know, uh, for license. So I think uh, as of now, no major penalty, but we just go after them. Okay. I, you know, I, I think it's important that uh, our businesses do have a license here in the city as well as the state. Um, does yes. King County charge a license, a business fee license, if you're in King County? Our uh, city of Seattle does. Individual cities have. But not the that, county. But not the county. Good. Know. Okay. I, uh, I wouldn't actually, want. Actually, if you remember when we did COVID-19, that was uh, one of the conversations that we had. In order for you to qualify, you must have a city business license. So, and uh, few businesses registered in a hurry. <laughs> so, so okay. I think uh, that was one of the requirements for you to get the COVID-19 relief. You must have city business license. Yeah, I wouldn't want uh, businesses to have to pay for a license over and over and over, but it's important that we know who's who's conducting business in federal ways so that we can properly serve them. Yes. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, committee members, uh, Leander Kraft, I saw your hand earlier. Do you still have questions? Oh, no, I was just going to make a comment. I don't want to overstep um, what Attorney Call said. I think that um, just a general comment on practices with courts lately, people have been, uh, I have noticed that some court systems have been um, less inclined to hold um, offenders if it's not a, a serious crime because the, countywide the practice has been to not keep people confined in jails just because of con the concern of spread for COVID. So I was just adding that there. I think that practices are starting to change now that uh, we are opening, uh, the state is opening up more and jury trials are being set out. Um, so we may see a change in practice soon. I was just commenting um, in response to uh, Councilmember Kochmar. Thank you for that additional information. Council President Honda, uh, I see your hand still up. Do you have any additional questions? Uh, no, I thought I took it down. So is it down <laughs> now? Yes, it is now. I must have clicked, I must have touched it twice then. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's all right. Okay. Um, do we have any um, any other questions or concern? Uh, just uh, a, a quick addition. Oh, Are they, go ahead. Okay, just a quick addition so that you know. Even though we call this final December report, I think we have uh, some invoices that came in, you know, uh, yesterday, today, for last year, and in the accounting world. If it is considered material, you know, even when the state auditor's office come in in May, they will force me to go back and put that back in. So after we've prepared this report, there's some invoices that I consider material that I think the state auditor's office will also consider material that we will post because uh, both myself and Ryan and uh, uh, Mayor met uh, uh, this afternoon trying to figure out okay, what does 2020 uh, look like? Where are we in trying to get ready for the budget amendment? So, but some of those things will be posted back to 2020 because they are 2020 expenditures and they are considered material. I think part of what is happening because a lot of, our, not just the city of Federal Way employees, a lot of people that we deal with because most of the employees are working from home Getting to all the invoices is taking a little bit longer than it usually takes. And that is why 
I think uh, we are reopening our 2020 activity to be able to post this into it. So just to let you know. Uh, secondly, even though based on what uh, Mr. Donnelly explained, uh, uh, we have uh, 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 our sell stocks based on the budget amount look good. Our utility tax looked good, uh, but admission tax was way, way, way down. Our permit fee was way, way down. And the extra revenue that we have in general fund, I want to remind you that because Community Center, Dumont Bay, Performing Heart Center, because they do not have any income and we have to maintain them. So whatever extra money that we have in general fund, may have to be used to keep those three buildings afloat. So I think those are part of where, when we're doing budget amendment or, or whatever, a portion of the money. So if you are looking at just the general fund and say, oh, I think you have this much money. Well, not entirely. It's not going to be spent entirely just on general fund because you have those facilities mm -hmm. that are now open, but they have to be maintained. And our city uh, department did really well, too, by underspending their budget, mostly because the staffs are now here. So I just wanted to uh, make those points in addition to what uh, Chase did. Thank you, Ade, for that uh, gentle reminder. <laughs> OK, uh, let's see. I don't see any hands up. Um, if we don't have any other questions, um, may I have a motion, please? Yeah. Uh, Chair Tran, uh, I move to forward the December 2020 monthly financial report to the March 2nd, 2021 consent agenda for approval. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion, questions? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the matter passed 3 0. And now we are moving to our last item, uh, which okay. is the utilities tax rebate program. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, based on our card, the committee's. Uh, request last month, we did some work with the uh, city of Burien, Lakewood, Tequila, I think, uh, uh, try to compare what they are doing to what we're doing and, you know, trying to come up with a proposal. But I think if it is uh, the pleasure of the committee, I can wait for the, uh, uh, the, uh, the other committee that is trying to make a recommendation before we actually put the new policy together. But we realized that the uh, uh, city of Burien, you know, they don't have any rebate on water or sewer. Uh, they did uh, on uh, electricity, they do on gas, and uh, they do on uh, 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 land phone. Pretty much all of them, they fix a dollar amount. For example, city of Lakewood, if you qualify for electricity, they give you $10. If you qualify for gas, they give you $10. If you qualify for or land phone, they give you $10. And uh, Tequila, you know, they, they set a, 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 a fee and they open up their operation for a longer period of time. Uh, take, for example, City of Burien, I think they set the amount annually, you know, uh, for or for cable, they'll pay $18.36. Uh, and they are requesting that you have to provide a physical address, no PO box. So I think I will probably wait till uh, the, uh, the other committee that is working. What we are thinking is to be able to propose what if, you know, maybe $15, sewer $15, electricity $20, gas $20, and uh, so that the total amount comes to maybe about $120, $100 or $120. Uh, and instead of requesting, like I mentioned before, 
monthly invoices, if we're able to say, well, you've, st you've, you've started living in the, in the apartment or the house since January, well, evidently you must be paying. So just use that alone. Use the driver's license to attest to the age that they qualify. Use their social security processing to their poverty so that we're not requesting too much information from our elderly or the, uh, uh, the people that are, are having trouble to do this. But at the same token, shall be able to verify their income and be able to verify their age. And I think driver's license, social security processing will take care of those without putting too much. Social uh, driver's license will also tell you where they are living. A recent uh, uh, bill from any of this utility company will also tell you, yep, that is the house or the apartment that they live in. You know, because some of our elderly just providing the last two invoices alone is difficult than to have to provide the last 12, you know, invoices. And I think uh, that is where we are leaning. But again, if it's okay with the committee, you know, I think I, I, you know, I will wait till we hear what the other committee is working on so that we can incorporate that into whatever the changes, the policy. Instead of putting something before you, then that committee comes up with their own and we either have to make ch changes or, you know, so that is, will be our proposal. Okay. Thank you, Ode. Um, committee members, uh, Linda Koshma, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Chair Tran. A, a day when I was on the council when we passed the, I believe it was an ordinance that yes. implemented the utility tax rebate program. And yes. I know that the intention at that time was to rebate the entire amount of whatever had been spent for the utility taxes. So for example, if you if you make it like ten dollars a year, I don't know if you're saying ten dollars a month or ten dollars a year. I, I just think it should reflect whether it's an average or I don't have a problem with uh, asking for um, you know less information, but I just think it should reflect I mean, some of our water if you're in a house, your water sewer bill is going to be closer to averaging around two hundred dollars, maybe one hundred and fifty uh, on the average biennially. So I mean by monthly. So my 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 question, my uh, caution would be just that I think the in, the intent was to fully give back to those people who were paying those utility taxes almost the full amount of whatever they're paying in. And I realize that people may have dementia, they may have somebody trying to help them. I realize there's problems with that, but I, I would just want to be sure that we're very generous with our utility tax rebate program. That's my my uh, input. Thank you. And you can read that ordinance. It, it's on the books. Uh, uh, yes, actually, that is what it is. But again, like I said, that is part of what is creating problems. I mean, if that is what the council wants to do, that will be fine. But that is part uh -huh. of what is creating problems for some of them trying to come up with some of these invoices for the past 12 months. It's creating, okay. but again, that is what is the current policy now. If that is okay. what the council wants to retain, that will be fine with me. But you, would you, I just need to give you the feedback that part of the comments that we are hearing from them is it is creating so much problem for them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council President Honda. Thank you. I have uh, a few questions. I. I want to make sure that we don't forget that those who are uh, disabled and qualified would also still be able to um, get this rebate. Yes. And do any of the do it? Are the qualifications for all of the cities pretty standard? Uh, there's a separate qualification for disabled. You know, I think, and there's also a different qualification for people that are you know, uh, elderly. Uh, disabled, you don't have to be of any age if you are disabled and you're getting disabled check. And actually, that is pretty much the what qualifies you. And that will be what we will rely on that, well, you are getting a disabled check from Social Security. Evidently, you are qualified. And regardless of what the age is, 
Then on the other side, as based on the current policy, if you are this old and you are poor, your income is this, then you qualify for this. So there are two, yes, we will make sure both of them are included, but you know, there are two separate okay. issues. Um, so this has been brought up before, to me at least. What about those families who are struggling and who might also qualify if they were the right age? You know, if they were older or that they would qualify, and but they're, they're not quite there yet age-wise. Uh, do, yeah. do any of the cities offer anything for, for families? Uh, what we have now is... Uh, Say, for example, uh, City of Lakewood is uh, 62 plus. Uh, city of uh, Burien is 65 plus. City of uh, 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 Tequila is 65 plus. So if we just want to open it up to everyone, then we will be, I mean, that is the prerogative of uh, the city, but that is what the, the people that are doing it, they are using the age if you are older and you are poor. So if we just want to say, if you are poor, well, we can, so. I don't know that we just want to say that. I just want to, I, you know, it, it's been brought up to me why we only um, have those that are having difficulty if they're a senior, when families, especially younger families, could have the same kind of difficulty. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Thank you very much. Certainly. Ade, I, I have a, a, a question, a kind of follow up with what uh, Council President uh, Honda just asked you. Um, is there a way we can do some type of analysis to see? Um, let's say we include, and I'm just throw this out. This is just an idea. Um, include those family who have their kids qualify for free lunch, uh, for example. Um, is there a way we can uh, do some type of analysis to see if we include those families, how much it's going to cost us, for example? As of now, there's no way for us to be able to do that. Even the utility utility company doesn't try their customers by age, you know. Uh, so there's no way. Uh, and since we are not the utility provider, we will have to put the burden on them, which in talking to Lake Lake Haven, they are now, which I totally, I mean, if the shoe were on the same foot with me, I probably would they are not willing to do that additional work for us. Mm. You know, and knowing that, you know, they're probably short staff just like the rest of us are. And if it was me that is working for them, I wouldn't want to take any additional work either. Mm. So they are not willing to do that. And there's no way as of now for us to estimate out of all these customers, how many of them are of this age, how many of them will be poor and all of that. So. Okay, thank you. So um, the other question I want to ask is, I know the, um, the committee is working on some type of recommendation. Do you have any idea what the time frame look like or when they will have a final product to share? Um, Chair, I could help you with that. Thank you. Uh, so Jerry Lynn and I both are staffing the Senior Commission. And they've just started to work on this, but uh, Chair uh, Debbie Harvey spoke to us earlier today, and she thought sometime maybe by the end of March they might have something to share with us. Great. Thank you. So I know that um, they are very interested in this and want to help the, the seniors especially in federal way, get the, the help that they need from the city. So would we want to put a, a deadline on on the commission to getting information to us, or do we just want to keep it open-ended? Uh, I think I mean, it would... 
Go ahead, Ade. I think it would be good to put some deadline for them. But the good news is we, whatever policy, I would suggest we have it in place probably before the end of the year so that it can be implemented for 2022. So what that does, it gives us time, but at the same token, we don't want to wait till the last minute either. I think whatever it is that they, are, they, they propose, I'm hoping that maybe the committee will ask us to fair to do our own research or whatever to collaborate whatever number that they have or to have additional time to take it to the council for discussion, whatever that is. But as long as it's done by November, I think we need time for the, uh, when we change the ordinance for the law to be able to review that. So, but that can be done two months before the end of the year. So just want to okay. provide you that information. I was just curious, uh, will uh, 90 days is, is too rush for them or, or is that reasonable? 90 days, say from today? I think that would be very reasonable. They This commission is very hardworking. They put together a booklet of senior services in just months. You know, they're, they're very hardworking. They um, put their minds to it and their hearts to it and they get get done what they want to get done. So I think that's very, very reasonable. I, I would like to, to make the proposal uh, if, it's, uh, if it's okay with the group, uh, maybe we ask uh, to have at least the initial uh, report back to us by the end of May. That will give them a, a little bit more than 90 days. Uh, I will take that to them. Okay. Thank you. Any, uh, any questions for a day? Community members, Coach Ma, please go ahead. Well, thank you, Chair Tran. Are we moving on to other now or are we still on the same topic? I, I think this is the this is the, our last uh, agenda item for today. For for other, what I would like to ask again, I I believe I've asked it in the past. We still haven't received it. Would be, uh, you know, I believe that uh, we probably have somebody in house that's probably providing a spreadsheet on claims to management, and I would like that to be shared with um, um, the council. Um, by email, uh, not necessarily in a public meeting, just I believe that I would like to see how we're doing with our claims, the amount, the number, maybe on a quarterly basis. I, I'm pretty sure if we have somebody in house they're probably tracking it monthly, but I would just like to see um, some kind of a feedback on what our claims are. Thank you. Um. Councilmember Coach Mar, I was under the impression that that was in the works, so I will check on okay. what the timing is for that. Okay, thank but you. Quarterly, we all of this is tracked in the WCIA database program that we use, so it's just a matter of running a report. Thank you. So I thank can't you. imagine it's going to be that difficult. Not. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Anything else? So quiet today. Uh, oh. <laughs> so just to re just to remind all the council members, um, we have executive session at six thirty. We need you back on this Zoom at by six thirty, so that we can call the meeting to order, and then we'll go into uh, another Zoom meeting for the executive session. Okay, thank you for that. All right. Um, so our future meeting is going to be March 23rd, 2021. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be on Zoom again. So with that, uh, this meeting is uh, concluded and I will see everybody uh, back here in about 25 minutes, 24 minutes. Yep. You right? can just stay log on or just close your Do you camera know, can we whatever. just stay? Yes. Yeah, that's what You're I was gonna ask. To can stay. we just stay yes. on? Yes.
Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, see you later. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.
Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you guys doing? I'm good. How are you doing? It was a long day of Zoom meetings for me. Oh. How about you? And how, how about you, uh, Council Member Kochmar? How are you feeling? How's your recovery doing? Oh, doing well. Much better. Thank you for asking. Yeah, yeah actually you. doing great. Good. Thank you. Here. Did you all see yep. the hail outside, uh, you know, a few hours ago? The hail was really intense. What was it? The hail? Oh. Yeah. Huh. No, I didn't. Wow. It's snowing in the mountains like crazy. <laughs> I'll be thinking about you guys. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> As you push that little pineapple express down the <laughs> down the cloud. <laughs> so when do you come home? Goodness. Um, we should be back by Thursday. The beauty of Zoom meetings. My supervisor also right now is um, at her house on, I can't think about what island, but they're in Hawaii right now. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> we are in uh, Oahu um, because Maui and um, the big island and Kauai, they have different set of rules. They're more strict. Oh, for restrictions? Yeah. What's what's open down there right now? Is everything pretty open? It's um, pretty much um, everything open, uh, but they usually open around 11 o'clock and they close uh, around 8. Uh, prior to COVID, most of businesses here open really early. Like early. 8, 8, yeah, 8 a.m. and then close at 11 p.m., but now they cut down the hours. Yeah, I have family that lives in Waipahu and some family that lives on Kalihi Street in Oahu. So we were actually scheduled to go to Hawaii this past September for my daughter's like first birthday mm -hmm. and for my 30th. And we just had to cancel. I mean, because it was September wasn't. It was the whole you would have to quarantine, I think, for 10 days when you got yes. to or something like that. Yes. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. Quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mar like Mariko, brought, Mariko came home in September with the boys. And when she went back, she had a quarantine for actually 15 days. Oh, wow. Because they don't count the first day that you got there. So it was turned into 15 days. <laughs> You know, actually, I feel, house painted inside. <laughs> I feel very safe here. Uh, their um, COVID uh, positive rate is 1.1%. Wow. Yeah, wow. The, the, the lowest in, in the nation. Mm, that's, that's, yeah, that sounds much better than being here. My grandma lives in Juneau, Alaska, and she already got her second dose of shots, and most of the community there because it's it's much smaller community in juno um and and it turns out to be a lot of people who are retired out there they they almost all have their uh vaccines and so she's she's like i want to come visit you know my great uh, grandkids but i don't want to come to washington <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's that's probably the right thing for her right now flying and everything she yeah. probably doesn't want to do that Okay, hey, everybody, can you guys hear me okay? Hello, Mayor. Hi. Uh, sometimes these uh, earbuds, uh, the uh, volume doesn't work that well. So you guys can hear me okay? Yes, that's your mirror. Yep. Oh, very good. So we're, okay. we're missing Martin. Well, the meeting starts at 6.30. So. Well, I, I, I know, I know. Yep. I'm just yeah. acknowledging that. <laughs> yep. He knows it. He knows the meeting starts at 6.30. So... Um, so, um, do you have, does anybody have any objections to starting? 
No, we've all been here since five. Exactly. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Ryan? Actually, Mayor, this is to call the meeting to order, then we're going to adjourn to an exec session. So okay. do you have the agenda for that, for the special meeting? Uh, yes. One second. Where's my... Hold on for a second. One sec. Um, just a heads up, Martin's trying to get into this special exec session, so he'll be joining you there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I was just going to text him. Okay. Um, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, and uh, uh, welcome to the, uh, oh, I guess we, uh, uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. You, re- you guys ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I pledge allegiance okay. to the flag of the, the United flag. States of America. States United States of America. States of America. And to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, for which it stands. stands. One, nation, one, nation. one nation, one nation, under God, under God, under God. God. Indivis- indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and with justice liberty for all. With liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome. All right, um, we have an executive uh, session uh, <laughs> pursuant to. One second. I got to get the exact RCW, percent RCW 4231101I. And uh, Ryan, how long uh, do we anticipate the executive session? Oh, he disappeared. Uh, why don't we say, um, let's see here. Uh, I, I would say about 30 minutes. And if we have to get back on, um, uh, we'll come back out. All right, we are adjourned uh, for that exact purpose. Thank you, everybody.